In this module, we'll move to the group of leaf eating pests that I call specialized feeders. This can include some caterpillars and sawflies, but we will now encounter quite a few beetles that feed on plant foliage. Specialized feeders include hole makers, leaf notchers, and skeletonizers. Within these general groups, we can further define some of the details. As an example, some skeletonizers make fine skeletonization where all of the veins and cross veins remain, while other skeletonizers are crude and only leave a few of the larger veins behind. We'll start with the skeletonizers, which is the largest group of specialized feeders. Basically, skeletonizers generally eat the leaf tissues between leaf veins. As just stated, skeletonization damage can be further characterized. There are crude skeletonizers, like Japanese beetles, that eat most of the leaf tissues and only leave behind larger veins. Others are very delicate skeletonizers, leaving behind all of the veins and even the upper or lower epidermal layer. This is another clue as to the pest identity. Did they remove the upper leaf tissues or lower leaf tissues? The oak slug sawfly skeletonizes from the lower leaf surfaces, while the poplar leaf beetle larvae skeletonize from the upper leaf surfaces. Japanese beetle adults are a common crude skeletonizer of plant leaves. Notice in the upper image that the fresh skeletonization is green, but you can see some brown skeletonization in the background where the damaged tissues have turned brown. This is a good diagnostic tool for you to use to determine if a pest is still active or not, especially if you don't see any pests when you are looking. Adult Japanese beetles are attracted to the chemicals that are released from skeletonized leaves. This is why some plants in the landscape get all the damage and other plants, even of the same species, may escape major damage. Japanese beetles can occur in such large numbers that their skeletonization damage can actually defoliate favored hosts. When this occurs in the hot and dry periods of July, severe plant stresses and even death can result. Remember that the adult Japanese beetles are only one stage of this pest. Like all beetles, Japanese beetles have a complete life cycle and the larval stage is called a white grub. These robust C-shaped larvae feed on the roots of turf grasses and other plants where they can also cause extensive damage. Unfortunately, since the adults can fly considerable distances, seeing adult beetles doesn't automatically mean that the nearby turf will be damaged. And conversely, having turf damaged by Japanese beetle grubs doesn't mean that the nearby trees, shrubs, and flowers will be damaged by the adults. However, the probability of damage does increase. Understanding the annual life histories of pests is often an important key to help manage them. In this colorized USDA life cycle chart of the Japanese beetle, you can easily see that most of the year is spent as a white grub feeding on plant roots. The adults generally emerge in early to mid-June. While a female can lay a few eggs without feeding, she can maximize her egg production by skeletonizing ornamental plant leaves and then laying eggs. In fact, most females feed and lay eggs in several bouts scattered over three to four weeks during July. Females concentrate their feeding on plants that have been fed upon by other beetles and they prefer to lay their eggs in moist soil where there is considerable organic matter present. In areas where Japanese beetles are abundant, management can be difficult at best. It usually requires two or more insecticide applications that are known to be able to kill the adult beetles as they feed on plant leaves and flowers that have been coated with the insecticide. Some newer systemic insecticides are retained in the plant tissues 
and some of these have residual activity for three to four weeks, which is sufficient to cover most of the adult feeding activity period. The key is to get the treatment out when the first adults emerge so as to lessen any plant damage that attracts more beetles. Japanese beetle traps are commonly sold in garden centers and online. These are not recommended as they draw more beetles into the landscape and they are only about 60% effective in trapping the beetles. In fact, research has shown that plants near traps often receive more damage than plants further away from the traps. Damage by the hollyhock sawfly is often mistaken as being done by Japanese beetle adults because of the crude skeletonization that is so similar. However, hollyhock leaves are poisonous to Japanese beetle adults, though the beetles can feed on the flowers. This little sawfly has males that are orange and black, while the females are solid black. The little larvae are speckled and usually feed from leaf undersurfaces. Unfortunately, there can be up to three generations per summer, but if the first generation is controlled, the following generations rarely cause much damage. Here are some examples of fine skeletonizers. Many of the leaf beetles have larvae that skeletonize host plant leaves. In this case, the early instar poplar leaf beetle larvae finally skeletonize leaves from the leaf upper surface. When the larvae become mature, they switch to a crude skeletonization method that leaves jagged holes in the leaves. At the bottom is some oak slug sawfly larvae. These feed gregariously on oak leaf undersurfaces where they produce a fine skeletonization with most of the veins and top epidermis remaining intact. The damaged tissues soon turn brown and this can look like a foliar disease from a distance. This pest can occasionally have outbreaks where numerous colonies can skeletonize noticeable amounts of oak leaves. Normally, predatory wasps keep this pest in check. There are three common species of sawfly larvae that attack rose leaves. All are called rose slugs. The common rose slug has smooth larvae that skeletonize the upper surfaces of rose leaves. The larvae may move from leaf to leaf, skeletonizing only small patches that appear as window panes in the leaf. The adults are tiny black wasp-like insects. The bristly rose slug larvae feed on the undersurfaces of rose leaves when small. As these larvae mature, they become solitary and can become general defoliators. The curled rose slug isn't shown here, but it also feeds on leaf undersurfaces. The larvae of this one remain tightly coiled up in a spiral during the day. All are pretty easily controlled with stomach or systemic insecticides registered for sawfly control. We pointed out earlier that many species of caterpillars can start out as fine skeletonizers when the larvae are small but they may turn into crude skeletonizers, even defoliators, as they mature. The yellow neck caterpillar is a good example of this. The young larvae are skeletonizers, while the mature larvae are general defoliators. Of course, the trick to good management is to detect the skeletonized leaves and treat then rather than waiting until the caterpillars are large and defoliating a plant. In fact, if you catch the early instars, you can remove the entire population by simply picking off the infested leaf and crushing the larvae. Another category of specialized feeders are notchers. Notching is simply leaf tissue eaten from the edge of a leaf. The notchers can be irregular to very uniform, small to large. Several foliage feeding weevils are notorious notchers. The root weevils and Asiatic weevils are common in our landscapes. Some species of caterpillars can also notch leaves, especially when they are young. 
Finally, there is a group of solitary bees called leafcutter bees. These bees cut out smoothly oval or round leaf sections which are used to line their brood burrows. Weevils that notch are often pretty secretive insects. They are usually active at night and only their damage is visible the following day. Some, like the root weevils, which includes the black vine weevil, strawberry root weevil, and the rough strawberry root weevil, commonly notch a wide variety of landscape plants at night and drop to the ground to hide during the day. Many of the Asiatic weevils, including the Asiatic oak weevil and the green vagabond weevil, remain on their host during the day but hide on undersurfaces of leaves. Most of this leaf notching is purely cosmetic damage and rarely harms the long-term health of the plants. However, several of these weevils have larvae that can feed on the roots of host plants and this can cause much more severe damage, which often isn't seen. The black vine weevil is one of the most commonly encountered notchers in urban landscapes. The adults feed on a wide variety of plants, but Taxus is a fevered host, as is Rhododendron and Azalea. This is an unusual species in that it is parthenogenic, with males being rarely found. Females feed at night, and upon maturing eggs, they dig into the soil containing preferred plants to lay eggs. The C-shaped larvae look a bit like white grubs, but they lack legs, as do all weevil larvae. The larvae feed on roots during the late summer, fall, and early spring. Upon maturing, the larvae pupate in the soil and the adult weevils emerge a few weeks later to complete the life cycle. The notching can even occur on taxes needles. The notching is usually not important, but the larvae can girdle the stems of plants, thereby killing them. Over the last few decades, numerous European and Asian leaf-feeding weevils have been introduced into North America. One of the more recent species is the Sri Lanka weevil that is notching dozens of different species of trees in Florida. The European snout weevil and green immigrant weevil are two other common species now found over most of northern North America. At present, the adult notching of landscape trees and shrubs can become quite extensive, but little damage from the larvae that feed on plant roots has been detected. Most of these are considered to be aesthetic pests, and most homeowners miss them. Remember that leaf notching isn't exclusively caused by weevil adults. Smaller caterpillars, even the first and second instar larvae of a giant silkworm moth like the polythemus moth, usually notch the edges of host leaves until they become large enough to eat entire leaves. In this image, the rhododendron was assumed to have been attacked by black vine weevil adults until some small caterpillars were found on the undersides of several of the leaves. They were the apparent notchers. Even some sawfly larvae, like the columbine sawflies, prefer to feed on leaf margins. Individual larvae can notch a leaf, but when you have several sawfly larvae eating a single leaf, they end up defoliating the stem. Leafcutter bees are a very distinctive notcher of broadleaf plants. The adult bees are about the size of a honeybee, but they carry their pollen on hairs that line the underside of the abdomen. These are solitary bees that make nests in the pithy stems of plants. The adult female chews out the pith of a cut branch, then cuts out oval shaped and circular pieces of plant leaves. These pieces are used to line and define cells in which pollen and nectar are stored. When a cell is provisioned, the bee lays an egg, caps the cell, and makes another brood cell. The adults seem to prefer the leaves of a rose and ash, but other plants can be used for cutting leaf pieces. Again, these are considered to be curiosities that make minor cosmetic damage. 
their pollination services certainly outweigh any damage that they do. Flea beetles and flea weevils make small, round, or oval holes in the foliage of host plants. Some call their style of feeding pit feeding because the adults usually remove the epidermal layer and underlying tissues, but the lower epidermal layer is left intact. If pit feeding is done on young plants, the remaining epidermis dies and drops out. All can be called shot holes because of the small size. If made on leaves that are still expanding, the hole usually becomes teardrop shaped and enlarged. Several beetles, especially May June beetles, small caterpillars, and other insects chew irregular holes in leaves. If these holes are made when the leaf is small, the holes get larger as the leaf expands and matures. You can usually tell if damage is old or recent by looking to see if the edge of the holes have healed over and there will usually be some yellow or brown margins. Flea weevils and flea beetles are small insects that have the hind legs enlarged for jumping. The beetles often jump off of their host plant if disturbed or they see you coming, so the adults can often be missed. Most of the flea weevils have larvae that are leaf miners, while the leaf beetles have elongate larvae that usually feed on plant roots. As previously stated, numerous caterpillars chew irregular holes in host plant leaves. Those species that become medium-sized or larger often turn into general leaf eaters and defoliators. Several species of leaf beetles also make holes in host leaves. The tortoise beetle group is one of the subfamilies of leaf beetles. In this case, the larvae of tortoise beetles are usually leaf skeletonizers, but the adult beetles simply make irregular holes in leaves. The yellow poplar weevil has a rather unique feeding method that produces bean-shaped holes in leaves. Basically, the adult weevil skeletonize bean-shaped patches on favored host trees such as tulip tree and deciduous magnolias. The left behind epidermis soon dies and dries out to leave bean shaped holes in host leaves. The weevil overwinters as an adult in the leaf litter under favored trees. In early spring, the adults feed on leaves, then the females lay small batches of eggs in the mid vein of a leaf. The larvae that hatch out mine the tip of the leaf and upon completing development pupate within the old mine. The newly emerged adults are common in late June and these again make more bean-shaped holes in host leaves. A rather unusual homemaker that attacks oak trees is the oak shot hole leaf miner. This is an invasive species of tiny fly that has larvae that make mines in oak leaves. The adult female flies, however, use their ovipositors to poke holes in expanding oak leaves to macerate some of the tissues for food. The fly will make a series of these punctures down a leaf. After making a puncture, the fly backs up to the wound and ingests the leaf liquids. Eventually, the fly will insert an egg into one of these punctures and the resulting larvae will make a linear mine to the leaf margin where the mine is enlarged into a blotch mine. As the leaf finishes its expansion, the feeding punctures expand into a series of irregular holes. <laughs>